spinning blue like that. And that indicates that it is powering up. And then it'll start spinning red. And so that indicates that it does need to be connected. So how do you do that? Well, first off, you, you um, press a, presented by Church Tech U, Companion Buddy Tally Lights and how to use them. Hi and welcome again. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. This is something that happened um, a couple of months ago. I got an email out of the blue from the good folks over at Companion Buddy. And they offered to send me three of their Companion Buddy tally lights. And so I said, sure, why not? So this is what they look like. Let me just grab one here. And I'll show you a close-up of this a little bit later basically this is a little module that is powered by USB-C and optionally you can get a quarter 20 uh, nut on the end of it so that you can connect it to all sorts of uh, different things that you can uh, connect to a camera rig etc so in my case I got all three of them with that and I've got one on my camera in front of me that you're looking at me through. Right now it's red. I've got another one on uh, one of my monitors right now and it's green, indicating that it's next up um, in the line of succession uh, through my video switcher. And so I thought that I would go and uh, show you just how you set these up and everything like that. So first off, you will need to head on over to uh, tdm.fyi slash tally. And that will take you over to just a companion buddy. And if we head here, here, let me, this is the website that it'll take you to. So uh, let me get my mouse over here. So just type in tdm.fyi slash tally. Hit enter and it'll take you to this website. That'll just uh, make it nice and easy for you to have an address. And it's a an affiliate link so they know that I sent uh, you over to it. So you can go here, click on shop here, and you can uh, buy these companion buddy tallies. They're uh, about $44 each. And you can get either the standard flat bottom or the one that I did, which was the quarter 20 threaded, which if you're going to mount this to a camera, that's a no-brainer. That's, that's the way that you want to do it. Uh, enter in your quantity, and I got mine pretty quickly. Just to show you a little bit, they are... A little bit bigger than a quarter, uh, if you're an American. Uh, not quite half dollar size, I guess. I don't see those very often, so uh, you can see you've got a place for the quarter 20 thread. And here's showing this. Now, this power, that could be just um, USB on the other end plugged into a monitor. It could be plugged into a battery pack, or it could be plugged into a power connector. It really doesn't matter. Any of those will do what you want to do. So once I receive those, um, then the next thing is to program them. So let me get my mouse over to... the other screen and then I will show you exactly how I did just that. So first you plug it in to power it. So notice that it's spinning blue like that and that indicates that it is powering up and then it'll start spinning red and so that indicates that it does need to be connected. So 
How do you do that? Well, first off, you you um, press a you take a little sharp thing like um, like a sim removal tool. I'm using a piece of wire, and there's a little hole there that you can see that you have to press, and it turns green. Now, once it turns green and starts spinning, then the next thing you need to do is you need to go to a device and connect to the Wi-Fi access point and then open up your browser. Once you've done that, go to setup.companionbuddy.io and you'll put in your SSID, your password, and then the IP address of the instance that has BitFocus Companion on it. So in this case, I had this with the wrong IP address, so I'm changing that right there. Um, and then you go ahead and you click Save. And once you do that, it should go from green to spinning blue again, and then it will uh, reboot. And so once you've done that, you need to head on over to your... Um, head back on over to Companion on your computer and you need to basically tell it everything that you need to do. So let's head over to there for that. And I've got all got that set up right here. So you do need a fairly recent version of Companion. Again, if you need to go get that, you go to bitfocus.io and you sign up here to make a, an account and then you download and install Companion. I've got another, I've got another tutorial on all of that, so don't worry about that. But once you've done that, go here and you should see it listed under Surfaces. And notice that I've got uh, three of them right here. I'm going to actually plug in this fourth one right here and you'll see that it pops up here in just a second spinning blue and then once it's done booting up it's sh this one right here yep should show up and one thing that I forgot to mention is notice these names it comes up with these kind of nonsense names which are just random words I'm sure there's some rhyme or reason to it and then numbers but that enables you to tell one apart from the other but what I've done is I've actually gone through and I've typed in what I want it to do so that's an important piece of the puzzle notice that it does give you uh, an IP address of how it's connected on your network. So I have uh, one of them is IP address 31 and then 32 and then also 28. So this is the one that is on my camera right now. This is the one for my left display and this is the one for my right display. So depending on which display I'm using, then it I can uh, swap them out and have uh, the display here. Right now, this isn't doing anything, but if I were to put this in preview, you'll notice that it goes green. And then when I, um, if I were to put it in program, it would go red. So how did I go about doing all of that well let's see here make sure that I have that um. do you like these videos but you'd really like to learn from me in person well I've got some great news for you I am traveling around the country and maybe even around the world training churches on how to use ProPresenter so I've got a uh, either a one or a one and a half day class that you can attend. For more details, head on over to tdm.fyi slash events24, the top one right here, and uh, register for the event nearest you. If there is no event that's near you, no problem, you can request one. So head on over to tdm.fyi 
slash in, uh, class request. That's this one down here. And um, you can say, hey, I'm interested in attending a class or even I'm interested in hosting a class. Up to you which you prefer. In the last one, that is just information. It's not obligation, so don't hesitate to put your information in there and uh, I'll let you know when there's a class in your area or we'll talk about what it takes to host a class. It's probably a lot less than you uh, imagine that it is. So head over there and uh, I look forward to meeting you in person. Set correctly. So first off, here in settings, you need to tell it what page that uh, of companion that it goes to. In this case, I made a page that its only job is for companion buddy stuff. So page two is what does it. And then you've got your horizontal offset and your vertical offset. You can also change the, uh, the brightness here. I've turned mine down to 25 because when I turn off the lights in my office at the end of the day, if I still have them either in pre preview or program on my surface, then I don't want them just super bright in here. So I've cranked that, that down to 25. These two really don't do anything with these tally lights. So keep that in mind. So page two, horizontal offset five, vertical offset one. Oh, and it's important to know that the numbers start with zero. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, and zero, one. So let's go to the actual um, buttons here. And we'll go to page two here. And this is page two. And this is the one that I was just telling you about. And notice that uh, horizontal offset was five, zero, one, two, three, four, five and vertical offset so not this top one so this is row zero so this is row one for this other one it's uh two or sorry one and one and then for this one it is zero one two three and one so that's what's going on there. Now let me show you how I get this uh, feedback. So if I clicked on this, first off, let me hide myself here. And I'm just showing the, um, the feedback on this particular button. So if I go here, basically, I have it set so that if um, the input is in preview, it's got a green background and black text like this. And if it is in program, it's got a red bro background and white text. So that's what I have showing up. I did find that at least in my early testing, that if I reverse these, if I put the program up here and the preview down here, that I would get mixed results. So that's an important thing to do. So if you are doing preview and program, I would uh, put the preview as the top feedback and the program as the bottom feedback. So that's important to know there. So that's that one, this one, much the same here, and this one, basically the same. And the important part is the feedback here. So um, keep that in mind. So is this a useful tool? Yes, super useful. Um, I will tell you that 
I was for a while having some issues and in the video that I showed you earlier it showed a firmware version. If you happen to get it with that firmware version, update to the latest firmware because the problem that I had with that firmware version was that the they weren't very responsive and they would disconnect and reconnect a lot of times. But the folks over at Companion Buddy solved that problem and they updated the firmware. I went through their instructions, which are very similar to um, just connecting for the first time. You, you basically have to connect to each individual one and then you just upload from your computer or wherever the little bin file and it reboots and that just solved that problem. So now they're very responsive. Um, I've used some other solutions for kind of budget tally in the past and it was a lot of work. Uh, it involved soldering, it involved uh, getting into stuff like um, like the Arduino IDE, you had to buy the appropriate hardware, 3D print the stuff. A lot of work. Sure, it was cheaper, but it was a lot of work, and it wasn't necessarily a better solution. So if I was looking for tally lights for my church, this is what I would do because, you know, you buy it for basically $45, do some basic programming, plug it in, and you're good to go. So you could have multiple cameras with tally lights on them that are reliable. If uh, it's a wireless camera, you could just plug in just a little battery pack, a USB battery pack, like you would use to charge your phone when you're traveling or whatever. And if it's a wired camera, then just run power and plug the hardwired uh power into that. So both of those are great solutions. The camera that I have in front of me, since it's powered all the time, I just have uh, a USB-C power cable coming down to a charging brick plugged into power and it's good to go. So it's a great little tool that you can use. Uh, the quarter 20, I got a little quarter 20 to a cold shoe mount thing and slid it onto my uh, cold shoe on the camera and that's good to go for the monitor I just um, actually I 3d printed a little cold shoe and double side taped it to the top of the monitor and slid it on and that solved that as well so lots of power very easy to use and I highly recommend it so that is the Companion Buddy Tally from CompanionBuddy.io.